Well hello and welcome to my latest video. I've not done a video for a while. Now you know that expression bandwagons are for jumping on. Well if there's a bandwagon around your old mate Jules is going to jump on it. So which bandwagon am I talking about? Well of course you know is it going to be some lonely working class bandwagon? I don't think so. I'm going to go straight to the top. Yes I folks am jumping on the king and the Kate bandwagon yes because your old friend Jules has got cancer now now okay you're thinking oh no he's got he's got cancer he's a god he's done for this world you haven't seen nothing yet friends you may remember if you've watched one of my previous videos that I did what it's like to have a biopsy and if you haven't seen it you've got to watch it anyway I had a biopsy and if you've seen the follow-up video to that you will find out that it said that I didn't have cancer. Well what happens is that you have a follow-up PSA test six months later and if they have, if you still have a based PSA test and um, PSA by the way stands for prostate specific antigens and it is one of the uh, ways in which that you establish that you might have cancer. Not that you do, but you might have cancer. So anyway, uh, I still had a raised PSA level, so they sent me for another biopsy, and guess what? They found that I had cancer in my prostate. Now, folks, I wish I could say I've got some kind of exclusive rare cancer, one that's never been discovered before, that I'm going to be an object lesson in science and the treatment of cancer, but no, I'm afraid not. Prostate cancer is incredibly common and uh, I think one in eight men either have it or will have it. So uh, if you're sitting in the pub at the moment watching Julian's videos and there's seven mates with you then I suggest you play a little game and say which one of us has got it or is going to get it. No, you shouldn't. Yeah. You shouldn't worry about it. Well, I suppose you should worry about it, but you shouldn't worry about it in the sense that they all say to you, all the doctors say to you when they tell you you've got cancer, they say, look, mate, if you're going to get cancer, prostate cancer is the one to get because it is treatable. And, well, I hope, and no, I do more than hope, I believe that my cancer is not only going to be treatable, but I'm going to be cured from it. So how does it work? Well, after you have the biopsy, they find the cancer cells, they send you for a scan uh, to check what else is going on in your body. In my case, they found that the cancer is, is confined to the prostate, so it hasn't spread outside of the prostate. And there are basically two alternative types of treatment. One is surgery, which is called a prostatectomy, and that's basically where they take the prostate out. And the other is radiotherapy. Now, in my case, because for various reasons, I had major surgery about 15 years ago, the surgeon said to me, oh, buddy, I ain't doing surgery on you because it's too risky. He said, I'm not going to miss the hefty insurance premiums, I have to say, because if I try and take your prostate out, I may get it all wrong and I take half your guts with it as well. And I said, OK, man, you is the expert. And yes, I suppose he was the expert. He's a very nice guy, by the way. So he said, OK, it's radiotherapy for you. So they sent me back to see another doctor, very nice doctor. And so I have to have radiotherapy, which is going to be starting in the next few weeks. So what does that entail? Well, radiotherapy is basically, in my case, uh, five days a week uh, for seven and a half weeks. It doesn't, interestingly enough, include weekends and bank holidays because apparently prostate cancer has got to have a break. Yep, guys, it's got to have a break. It doesn't like working over the weekend and on bank holidays. But for those five days... I have to go up to the hospital and I have to have my radiotherapy. What does that involve? Well, I don't entirely know, but I do know some things, folks. And if you are of a nervous disposition or if you are currently eating your dinner, I suggest you turn away or turn the sound down. And that is you have to have an empty rectum and a full bladder. Now, do not get these two things mixed up, guys, OK? You do not want to go with a full rectum and an empty bladder. You've got to have a full bladder and an empty rectum. And I'm not going to go through uh, what you need to do in order to have an empty rectum. But I'm sure you can work out what you need to do in order to have a full bladder. And that is because you have to drink. Now, when I went to see the nurse last week uh, in terms of preparation, she was talking to me. A very nice, a very nice nurse, by the way, named Henrietta. And she was telling me all the stuff that was going to happen and what I had to do. And what she said was you have to be hydrated. okay? Because if you're not hydrated, 
when you drink, the water is absorbed by your body when it needs to go to the bladder because your bladder needs to be full because when it's full, it moves away from the prostate. And so that's when they do the radiotherapy and that's what is best, uh, best done. So I thought I've got to drink and drink and drink and drink and drink like Lily the Pink. If you remember the Lily the Pink. Anyway, the thing was, I went for my uh, preparatory scan and I'd overdrunk. Yes, guys, who knew that it was possible to overdrink? Because I went there and they tested me with this ultrasound and they said, you've got 450 mils. 450 mils, that's half a, that's half a kilogram. That's nearly, uh, what is it? That's over a pound, a pound of piss. Yes, I was carrying around a pound of piss in my sack and they said, no, there's too much. We can't do the business with this. And I said, well, I thought you were supposed to have a full bladder. And they said, yeah, but not that. So you need to go to the toilet and you need to get rid of 150 mils. So they gave me a cup that contained 150 mils. Well, I don't care what age you are, but if you're of a certain age and you've got a full bladder and you try and go for a bit of a piss, <laughs> actually I did it. Yeah, funny enough, my, my bladder muscles are tight as, a, tight as a whatever it is. So I went to the toilet and I did that. And I came back and they said, no, there's still too much in your bladder. You've got to go to the toilet again. So I went to the toilet again. I thought, I ain't, I ain't doing this, guys. I ain't doing I ain't doing a bit of a piss and holding the rest of it. I've enough of it. So they, I pissed it all out. So I pissed it all out. And they said, well, you haven't got enough in you now. So you're going to have to drink some water, right, to fill your bladder up. And that's going to take time. So we're going to have to delay the process. And now my thinking, because I still go to work, you know, because I believe, I believe in the, uh, what is it, the importance of work. I said, well, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I've got to go to work. And they said, what do you mean you've got to go? You can't fucking go to work, mate. You've got cancer. You've got to stay here and you have your scan. You've got to have a full bladder empty rectum, et cetera, et cetera. So I said, okay, I'll be late for work then, but on your head be it. So anyway, um, I drunk, drunk the water and I was sitting around. And in the meantime, of course, they take another patient in because why waste the, why waste the time of the scan? The time of the scan, very important. So I drank the water, went back in there, they put the scan on me, said, no, it's no good, right? You've got, you know, you, you got too much, you've still got too much, you're too hydrated, it's all, it's all going straight into your bladder, it's filling up your bladder, it's too much, so you've got to go away, you've got to have another piss, and then you've got to have a drink some more water, so I did that anyway. So when I went back in, they measured it, and they said, okay, you've got 180, 180 mil in your bladder, that's enough, so they did the scan, and then they gave me three, was it three? I think it was three, three permanent tattoos Right, which is where the radio radio waves, is it? You know, magic, LBC. I said, why can't I have Radio 5 Live? They said, we don't do that anymore. It's rubbish. Nobody listens to it. But where the radio waves go in, you've got to have these three permanent tattoos. So I said, okay, I want to have, I want to have an anchor on, on my left hip, okay? I want to have Brexit forever on my right hip, okay? And then on, on my front, below my belly button, where the other thing is gonna go, I said, I wanna have one of those snakes wrapped around a, a dagger. Do you know what I mean? A snake wrapped around a dagger. I said, I wanna look like a tough guy, like, like, like a bouncer or an estate agent or something. And they said, no, you can't have that. So I've just ended up with three kind of little dots on me, but apparently they're permanent. Can you imagine that? I mean, what it, what, you know, the, what, there used to be a program on Channel 4, was there, about people who went and go and get tattoos changed into things that they wanted. I always wanted a tattoo, actually I didn't, Tattoo. My son's got a tattoo. It's a very nice tattoo, and I did think of getting a tattoo because it's one of the things you get to a certain age. You got to think, well, I'm, you know, what else is there left to do? I've been to Everest Base Camp. I've been, I've been down the down the Nile. I've been down the Ganges or the Amazon or whatever it is. Who knew that Amazon did rivers? And now I've got to get a tattoo. So I got a tattoo, but it wasn't really a tattoo that I wanted. But anyway, that's what happened. So now I am waiting until the beginning of April. And that is when my radiotherapy starts. And the aim of the radiotherapy is to kill the cancer cells. But to stop them regrowing in your prostate, you need to take this medicine. And the medicine is called Zolodex, if you're interested. I mean, you can't, you, you know, you may be able to buy it from your local dealer. But if I were you guys, I wouldn't because there are some very interesting side effects. Now, one of the main side effects of it, and, and basically the thing that Zolodex does it gives you the same symptoms as the female menopause, okay? So if you uh, if you have a mother going through the menopause, if you have a spouse or a partner or a friend or whatever it is who are going through the menopause, you will know something about the side effects of the menopause. And I can tell you they're not very nice. So, you know, if I was less than sympathetic to people who had menopause in the past, I know now, ladies... <laughs> I know now, ladies, what you are going through, and you have my deepest sympathy. But anyway, you don't want to hear about all my troubles. Well, of course, you do want to hear about all my troubles, which is why you're watching this fucking video.
video. So there you are. That is my big reveal. And did I do it on the day that Kate revealed the same thing because of a particular reason? Well, it wasn't that's the way I did. Because I was saying to myself, and I said to a few people actually, that there's only one thing more attention-seeking than telling people that you've got cancer, and that's having cancer and not telling. So and please don't leave a whole load of comments. Oh, oh I'm sorry, Julian, or, or it's going to be all right, or, or Julian, fight it, or, or why don't you try this, this particular homeo fucked up path, uh, medicine because that's going to make you feel good, or why don't you get out in the sunshine and go and hug the trees because that's going to solve your cancer. Please, please, please don't do that. If you are going through or if you have had prostate cancer, you have my sympathy. I will say to you what the doctors have said to me, which is that it is eminently treatable. I know... I know not everybody is cured. I hope I will be one of the lucky ones. I may not be one of the lucky ones. So far, I'm clinging to that. Well, I'm not clinging to that hope. I believe in my heart of hearts, folks, because I am a man of positive, positive energy. And I am grateful for all the things in life, including the fact that if I'm going to get cancer, I might as well get prostate cancer because that is the best cancer to have. And if there's a best cancer going, then YouTube star... Julian Hutchings of this channel, of not many recent videos, is one of those who's got prostate cancer. So, um, will I give you some updates here? Yeah, I suppose I will. Um, hope you've enjoyed this video. Enjoy? Is, is that the right thing? Did I enjoy watching Gates' video? I mean, I, I, I could make one of these, oh dear, mm. you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, oh, you know, I've, I've got some got some news to impart. I've got, I mean, why? You know, let's let's embrace life. Let's let's be positive. Let's be let's be grateful for what we've got. Let's look forward uh, to a brighter future. Let's believe. Yes, folks, let's believe that if we voted Brexit, everything is going to be fine. And if we believe that we're going to get away from prostate cancer, then we will do so. So I'd like to say thanks for watching this video. Keep watching, keep cycling, keep enjoying yourself, keep fighting the good fight, and see you next time. I hope. <laughs>